Well, it's all about power and heat. Uh, increasing the clock speed, as I will show you in a moment, uh, generates a lot of heat, a really big amount of heat. And in big data centers or even in your house, this can become a big deal. Uh, if you want to have a fanless computer sitting in your multimedia center, you really don't want to be able to hear the sound while you're w watching that romantic film. So why do computers get hot and why is this a problem? So with, with due apologies to all of the hardware guys out there who actually know what this stuff is about, people who have actually designed transistors, the thing that makes a computer fast, the thing that defines the speed of a computer is the speed at which a transistor can switch. And basically a transistor is a little conductor, another little conductor, and a piece of insulation between the two of them. And I'm hoping I'm getting this right. This is a source. This is a drain, or you can call it in or out, or whatever you want. Basically, no current flows from the source to the drain or from the in to the out because there's this insulator here. But the thing about a transistor is it also has a third wire on it called a gate. And basically, the point of a gate is uh, it, and when you apply some current to this gate, it's causes the insulator to be less of an insulator and current can flow between these two. And that's basically the basics behind a transition, transistor. The speed of a transistor is pretty much how fast an electron can get from one wire to the other. So obviously you want to speed up a transistor. What you do is you make this insulator smaller and smaller. And we've been doing that for low the last 20, 30 years. The problem is this insulator is now about 10 to 12 atoms thick can't make it any thinner, otherwise it no longer is an insulator, it becomes a quantum computer, and we don't know what to do with those things. We don't know how to use them as a, as a, to do computing in a very sensible way. So we can't make the insulator any smaller, which means we can't make the transistors switch any faster. Now what we can do is we can shrink the infrastructure around these transistors so that there's less dif distance uh, that you have to go from one source wire to wherever that wire goes, you make things faster. But um, that, that is the basic problem. This can't get any smaller. And as I said, although the infrastructure can, that only will take us so far. It's not going to give you gigantic speed ups. So what we need to do is think differently. Instead of have, and try, making one compute core smaller and smaller and smaller until it's smaller than a dust of grain, uh, grain of dust, what we need to do is put multiple compute cores here and try to write software which can take advantage of them all. And so, let's, before we talk about multicore too much, let's explain why power and frequency are a problem in a little more detail. Um, there is this rough rule that in any process generation, and by that we mean silicon that has things that are 130 nanometers apart or 90 nanometers apart or 65 nanometers apart or whatever, within that generation, there's this sort of rough rule that for a 1% uh, frequency increase, you get about a 3% power increase. and approximately a 0.66% performance increase, increase. So what exactly does that mean? Well, let's start here with frequency and power and performance. Let's say today we're on, a, we're on a system with, you know, frequency being whatever it is, power being whatever it is, performance being whatever it is. What happens if we increase the frequency of the system by 15%? Say we're going from a 3 gigahertz system to a 3.45 gigahertz system. You know, reasonable increase since we're currently at 3 in many of them. Well, what happens is, you know, 15 times 3 this puppy uses 45% more power just from going 3 gigahertz to 3.45, and that was an accident that they worked out the same. But performance, 15 times 0.66, is only going to work out to be about 9% faster. 
Not a particularly great uh, improvement. So let's go the other way. Oh, I'm erasing my ones. Oh, well. Let's go the other way. What if we slowed down uh, the processor a bit? What, what would do that do for us? So let's say make something that's 30% slower. Well, if it's 30% slower, um, 30 times 3, it's going to use 90% less power. And, but the performance is going to be 30 times 0.66 minus 100 uh, is going to be only about 80%. So we, we've decreased the power a fair amount. Uh, we've decreased the frequency a fair amount. The power has gone down like crazy, and performance is still pretty decent. And just to go to the extreme, let's say minus 50%, uh, running at half the clock speed, the power goes really the power goes down considerably, but still 66% performance increase. So this is fine for a single core. You probably wouldn't want to do that today because you wouldn't be able to compete. But what if you go dual core? So let's take this example here and do minus 15%, just because the numbers work out nicely here. So I'm going to say dual core. So a dual core system with 15% uh, frequency clock rate than the uh, existing. So 15 times 3 is 45. So call it approximately with two cores. Each is going to use about half as much power. So in total, the system will use uh, you know, about the same amount of power as the system running at whatever the current frequency is. But the performance, if we look at this, is about... Remember, we're talking two, two cores here is about, sorry, that's 180%. 0.66 times 15, about 9. Subtract 9 uh, from 100 times 2, so 90 times 2, about 180%. So if you could get perfect parallelism, the system, which is only 15% slower, if it's using both cores fully, will give you about 180%, 180% uh, better performance. Not bad. And we can play the same, same game with quad core. Um, let's just drop it by another 10%. So if it's 25% slower, again, the power is about the same. Uh, you know, 25 times 3, 75, uh, so the minus 75. So each core is going to use 25% the power of a single core, and then multiply it by 4, so it gives us 1. And the performance uh, works out to around, you know, a little better than 330%. Again, assuming a perfect world, if you could run quad-core, you uh, have a performance which is considerably better. So that's the whole reason, that, that's the basic reason Intel is going to multi-core. We can't make the insulator any smaller, so we can't switch the transistors any faster. We don't want to increase the, the, the heat generation, the power usage of these systems, any more than we really have so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop the frequencies a little bit, uh, put better cores in there too, and then put more cores. And the result is if you program your code right, you get in the end more performance out of your system, even though it's actually running on each little part of it is actually running a bit slower. That's the basic reason behind why we're going multi-core and why the industry is going multi-core.